Hey, Sean and Allison here from Spoken Garden. Hi, everybody. Hey, we're here to help you become a better gardener, and today we're going to show you how we overwinter some of our plants around our garden. I know. We need to go find some of our potted plants because we have them spread out all over our front and backyard, probably like you guys do yeah. too. And yeah, we have some room in our greenhouse and we, we have a couple things to set up in there, including mm -hmm. our heating mat, right? Yeah, kind of. And we're going to show you how we prioritize our plants and some of the thought process that goes behind overwintering our plants. Yeah, I'm excited to get this started because it's yep. starting to get Me cold too. at night here in Zone 8B where yep. we live. So yep. let's go find some let's plants. Let's go look for some plants. All right. So we're in our backyard, as you can see. It's our backyard. And we're going to show you the plants that we're going to overwinter. And they're kind of spread everywhere, like we were saying. So first off, we've got some plants, some newer plants, that uh, we're not going to plant this year yet. And the reason is, and these are some new hydrangeas we just got from Proven Winters. We're not going to plant these yet because the area we want to plant them in isn't ready yet. We, it's part of the terrace in that area. So we are uh, holding off. So we're going to overwinter these as they are, and then we'll plant them next spring. So let's check these out. Um, we're Yeah, like Sean said, we're super excited to get these in the ground. Um, we have... They sent us Fairy Trail Bride. Oh, this is going to be gorgeous. It's a Cascade Hydrangea. It's a rebloomer, so that's cool. Yep. And then Let's Dance Can Do. A beautiful pink. Look at that oh, gorgeous wow. pink color. I know, this is a mm -hmm. mountain hydrangea. Beautiful. And I believe this is another rebloomer. Look at those so, leaves. Look at that as well. Yep. So, those so will, you think we'll put those in the greenhouse? Yeah. Yep. Or up against maybe we'll heal them in. We'll see. First, we got to. So the first thing is, guys, we have to go through. We have to find all the plants. We gotta, we're going to put them all together. We haven't told you this yet. We're going to group them all together um, in our uh, grass area over here. And then we're going to start prioritizing the plants into groups based on if they can literally stay outside and they'll be cold hardy enough by their zoning. If they can stay outside or if they need to be in the greenhouse or you know, if there's no room, are we going to put them up against the house? Are we going to heal them in back here? So... But first we have to gather, yeah, we're going to heal them in in these beds like we did last year, Those these beds. raised beds. So first off, we're going to go show you all the plants and then we'll gather them and then we'll show you how we prioritize and we'll just keep going from there. Okay, you guys, so we got a, a beautiful fuchsia hanging basket right here. So we know we're going to need to overwinter that, right? Yep, we'll give it a haircut and get that ready to overwinter. But that's going to probably go in the, um, that's going to go in the garage. Oh, true. Up off the ground. Unfortunately, last year we put it on the ground and we shouldn't have. We put it on the concrete floor. It got too cold and it died. So uh, learn from that. We're going to take this one and the others, cut them back the way we need to, and then get them in the garage and we'll put them up on a bench. We've also got over here, so these plants we want to overwinter. We've got our impatient and our mm. coleus here. The coleus looks like it's starting to go on its way out here. It's the, We've had some really cold nights uh, repeatedly and we're just starting to get that cold die back on it. So we might not be able to keep this plant. We, uh, you know, so really, we would have oh. to put this plant inside, keep it inside, really, to keep it alive in our climate. We, we can't leave it outside. So I don't know if we're going to have enough room. I don't know if the plant's going to make it now. It's already got that cold snap on it. So we'll see what happens. We've got our begonia here. And Let's I'm pretty sure this is so gorgeous. I'm pretty sure we want to overwinter that. Oh, definitely. Now oh we've God, got some. Blooming. We've got some powdery mildew oh, growing yeah, on it, do. so we'll have to prune that out if we're going to put it with some other plants. But I mean, it's kind of all over the place, oh, so no. we'll see. We'll, we'll decide on that in a bit. Now, this is a tuberous begonia, right? This is hardy in zone 8B, I believe. Yeah, I think so, yep. We have a tag so, in here? Let's see. What does that say? Mm -hmm. So this is Illumination Salmon Pink Tuberous Begonia. Yep, so tuberous begonia. Beautiful. So, and uh, let's see. Let's look on the back and see what it's zoned for here. Uh, high bloom zoning zones nine through 11. Ooh, this is oh, just I wrong. Just, okay. yep, it's just on the on the very uh cusp there on the very edge of not being hardy in our area. So, we're gonna need to let this die back. We'll dig the bulb up and we'll put it with the other bulbs and tag it and overwinter it in the garage. Okay, good yep. plan. So, yep, glad we looked. Me too. So, okay. let's head on over here. Okay. Oh, you guys, look at that tree. Yep. It's one of our vine maples. It's gorgeous right now. Oh, okay. So we've Focus. got some plants over here. We've got some pots out here. Uh, here's one of the pots, a couple of the pots actually out here. One, two, and three over here. Um, these are our fall planted so uh, pots, our containers. We're not going to do anything with those right now. They're perfectly fine. We'll wait to do anything with those uh, a little bit later. Um, what we are going to overwinter over here 
uh, will definitely be overwintering this uh, this Dracaena. More than likely in this pot, it should be fine. All the other Dracaenas in pots out here do perfectly fine. So they're hardy. So we'll probably leave it in here. We're going to clean this up, though. We'll get the Zinnia and the Calibracoa out. Uh, just pull those out and just throw them out because they're oh, dying back I anyway. Try to, can we try to save this Calibracoa, maybe? Uh, yeah, it's going to have to go, come inside. Cuttings. Gosh, OK, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So other plants we're going to overwinter. I think this one's okay. That's a, that one is gonna be fine. This is our fall planted one. This caliber koa, uh, we can try and overwinter it in the greenhouse. It's yeah. a really big, heavy pot, so yeah. I don't know how that's gonna do on those benches in there. But we'll see. We'll definitely try to do that, so we'll, we'll grab both of those. Okay. And then we've got our African daisy. That's definitely gonna overwinter. We overwintered this last year, and it came right back. It looks beautiful. Um, so we will, we'll do that one and let's keep heading over here. We've got a whole bunch we of plants over a here lot to of do projects here. Yeah. You guys. If you've so, snuck a peek at this lately. Yeah. <clears throat> so we've got some caladiums, uh, some elephant ears in here. They're already starting to die back. Oh, yeah, they totally are. Um, so we have to dig these out, um, and we're going to overwinter them cause we don't want them in these pots. And, uh, more than likely they won't overwinter well in these pots cause they're exposed out to the elements, to the cold weather, and there's not enough insulation in these um, for the bulbs to survive the cold weather to come back the next spring. So we're gonna dig these out, we're gonna treat them like overwintering bulbs, storing them, and then we'll bring them back out in the spring and we'll actually put them out in the ground. So, but this was a great experiment and a good way to get these to grow this year. So that's why we did that. But definitely, um, well actually, yeah, this guy right here, this is, a color burst deep red cape fuchsia so beautiful pretty. plant we're actually going to um overwinter this as is um we'll see um i'm not sure how the hardiness is on this yet oh hardy seven to ten so we could heal this in over in those beds over there and we'll put that with that group so that'll be good okay so moving on from over here we've got this planter and we've had this planted up for a good while now and it's basically it's the english daisies right here and then you got your two cyclamen and we're actually going to leave these out we're not going to i don't think we're going to move these from the from the deck are we honey probably not because yeah. actually if you um if you guys maybe remember we had all of these these look, were all taken out well, look at the blooms on there. of that planter right there with that dracaena that was our beautiful spring see, planter. see the blooms <gasps> look at that yep oh. they're already coming up oh that's getting so ready gorgeous. to do their thing so the other one will be doing the same thing here pretty soon so yeah we're just gonna leave I this mean, out i kind of have a secret plan of like moving all of those back over here where they came from because we kind of traded it out for summer so maybe we'll see we'll see we'll see yeah. oh we have so many other so we've pots. got some other things we're not going to talk to you about right here but, know, um, so plants we're going to overwinter plants we're going to overwinter definitely all these geraniums we need to overwinter the geraniums they will we've already had so we a couple here. of frosts you can see Here's the frost damage. Once the geraniums get that frost, they start dying back. And so we see this, this is the sign that we need to either um, bring them in and start overwintering them and get them protected from the cold nights and early, early cold mornings, or we throw them out. And we'd hate to throw them out because mm -hmm. a lot of these them. are actually, oh, here's one that was got oh, kind of dug up there. That's fun. It's like the squirrels, yep. Yep. Darn it. But I mean, we've got all of these plants and about half of these, at least half, maybe more that you see here, they are actually cuttings. Oh, yeah. yeah. So we need to, we want to keep them. Put all that time and effort in, we want to keep them. So, so yeah, so we'll be, we'll be overwintering these so in the blue. greenhouse. Yeah. Okay. I, just, I think it's so pretty when they do start getting that frost damage. They start changing color like the rest of the leaves. It's mm -hmm. so pretty. Yeah. So here's another corner of our deck and just kind of taking a look here. We're definitely, we still have peppers blooming and growing down here. So we need to actually pick those, maybe save some seed from that awesome oh, yeah. plant. Some of these are ready to go. Look at those. those wow. Now these are the edible ones and these are just the ornamental ones. Yeah, don't, so don't, you try not to eat those. You can, you can if you want, but uh, we wouldn't recommend it. But these are the ones you want to eat. Oh, that's so cool. So, so yeah, we kind of have a, this is a lot of our fall uh, planted containers that we, you may have watched on a recent video. They're all doing really well, and we're not planning on moving those right now. Um, this pot right here, now this terracotta pot, we will be moving inside because we don't want to leave it out over winter. 
but we don't need to move it right now. It, and right? Guys, yeah, and the reason we want to move it in is because it is terracotta. It's that clay. It'll crack. Yeah, we don't we don't want that. So yep. we had this inside in the greenhouse all winter, and it did very well, and it rebloomed in the spring. So yep. we kind of have a spring fall blooming pot here that's kind of fun. Now here's another calabrocoa. Um, we had given this a haircut midsummer, so this this is all that grew back, and then it started getting really cold. So. Since again, we're zone 8B and this is only zoned down to zone 9 for mm -hmm. hardiness, we wanna, it's kind of questionable because a lot of the calibrocoa around our yard actually does live over and over winters, but we wanna save it. Yep. And, we, being, we well, love and it. being in this pot, its roots, its roots again are exposed, so we wanna yeah. insulate that and make sure that it gets protected so we have to bring it in. Yeah, I like that plan. So uh, there's a couple things we need to like just kind of get rid of annuals and whatnot, but everything else we'll be able to either put out in our yard in the winter or move inside. So I think that's our plan here, right? Mm -hmm. So let's head over to the table. We have a lot of little extra projects over here. So we've got um, oh, yeah. we've got this hydrangea that we again this um, all of these plants were meant to go up in this terrace area which we haven't finished yet. We put that project on hold because we weren't ready to move forward. Got a bunch of cannas in here. <laughs> we're still doing really, really well. Now they're hardy in zone eight, but we might, since we didn't get those in the ground, I don't know, what do we want to do with them? We should probably uh, protect them for over the winter. Now we grew those by seed. Those are from seed, I so, know. Yeah. They're so beautiful, I just love the foliage. Yep. So we'll probably let those die down to the ground, collect the bulbs and keep them inside over the winter and then we can replant them. Is yeah. that what you're thinking? Yeah, either that or just keep them in the pot. Or just keep them in the pot. Yep. And then uh, and then we'll just overwinter them in the, uh, in the greenhouse. I, I wanna try that actually. Or heal them in. So up here on the table is kind of a blend of little uh, plants going on here. We've got all our coleus that you may have seen in a previous video. Now these we actually keep inside in our garage. We keep them up off the ground in a warmer area. We don't want these in the greenhouse because they probably won't survive. It gets too cold at night, below 50 degrees out there in the greenhouse, and that's just too cold for these. So on this table, we'll probably bring a lot of these little plants in the greenhouse and put them on our heating mat, including this whole tray, which are a brand new bunch of perennials from Darwin, Darwin perennials. So. These guys, we just, they were just sent to us this fall and we didn't plant them yet because again, we weren't ready to get them in the ground. So, so you can see we've got all our plants that we're gonna place in the greenhouse here. The other plants uh, we'll put up against the house or we'll heal them in or we'll put them up against the greenhouse and they'll be fine. But these are the ones that we need to protect fully and put them in the greenhouse and put them on that heating mat that we're gonna show you in a little bit. So uh, before you take any plants inside either a greenhouse or any confined space or even in your own home, you want to go through and you want to get them all cleaned up because they've been outside, right? They've had a chance to uh, be introduced to bugs or diseases and they're going to have some debris around them. You want to get them cleaned up to not bring any disease or bugs into those confined spaces. So what you need to do like down here, here's some dead leaves. Go through and just pick those out. Clean it up. Yep. And you might have to do this too periodically after you put them in the confined spaces or your greenhouse. You'll have to come in and some of the leaves are going to fall down. That's perfectly okay. Just make sure to go in periodically and pick them up and get them out of there. And the reason for that is because these dead leaves can harbor other insects or make for good nesting areas for insects or harbor diseases that can then perpetuate and take over the rest of your plant. You don't want to do that because then it'll spread to the rest of the plants. So just keep up on it. So uh, want to look for bugs before you bring them in. Look on the other side of the leaves. See if you see any bugs or anything. I don't see any right here, so that's a good sign. And just keep looking. The old saying that goes, leave no stone unturned. Well, let's put it to the garden and say, leave no leaf unturned. And get in there and take a look at these. And as you're doing this, you might have bugs pop up off, like white flies or something. And if you do, uh, or if you find any other bugs, uh, underneath the the, uh, the the leaves or if you find them on the stems or anything like that you need to quarantine the plants get them off to the side get them away from all the other plants and um, then if you can treat them go ahead treat them with whatever you're comfortable with treating them with and then if it clears up great get them in the greenhouse if it doesn't keep treating it or you might have to say goodbye to the plants you might not be able to overwinter them for whatever reason you know for a bunch of different reasons but these are all things you need to consider if you're going to take them into the greenhouse and check for.
So basically we need to get these moved and figure out where they're going to go in the greenhouse. And we actually need to get the mat set up first. So maybe, yeah, oh yeah, the mat. Should we head on it? We still have some more plants to check like Sean's doing right now. Yep. Kind of a bug check. Bug check. But um, should we head on into the greenhouse and maybe see what's going on in there? Yeah, we can. Oh, found something. I think it's a, is that a slug? Not sure. So tiny. Yeah. So guys, we thought about it a little bit more with some deliberation and we're actually gonna heal in these, uh, this, this Tacoma here and in all these different kinds of hydrangeas. We're just gonna heal them in over in the raised beds over there. So we got four total plants right here that we can heal and there's some more on the deck and whatnot, but we're not gonna, we're not gonna really worry about those tonight or today. So we'll, uh, we'll definitely get these plants prepped, get them checked yep. and then get them into the greenhouse. Let's see what Sean's up to. Well, uh, Allison was yeah. able to get all these in here. Good job. And uh, so she set them out. They look really good right now. You can see we've got our cuttings over here on this heating mat. And this is our, uh, this is a, uh, it's a heating mat. It's a propagation mat. You might know it as. And so you can actually, I can feel it right now. It's putting out some heat. Oh yeah. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? I'm so glad to get so, this set up. Yeah. So we've got our cuttings on here. We've also got um our darwin perennials on here too the little and, guys over there you know they are hardy in our area but they're so small and um they're still i i think it, it'd be a big um uh, it'd be a big crapshoot to put these out in our garden and actually have them survive because they're just so small their root systems are small the plants are still newly developing so we're going to overwinter them here in our greenhouse for now and then uh, especially on this heating mat and then this spring we'll actually get them out into the garden after the threat of frost has passed and that cold weather's passed. Yeah. So good plan. Yeah. So we've got our other plants in here. We've got our our large coleus and then our impatience right here. And again, we've got these two pots right here with these plants. We're just holding them over in here until we can actually take some cuttings from them because even inside the greenhouse they're just gonna the, the air temperature is just gonna get too cold they're not gonna survive they could be in this greenhouse um with nice warm days but in the night times the air is just gonna get cold in here it's just the way it is this is an airtight house it doesn't have a heater in here we got a heating mat but even if we had those plants on that still the tissue is still exposed to that cold cold temperatures it's just not hard enough it's gonna die so we're gonna take our cuttings and then we're gonna get them out of here it's just the way it's gonna be so we've got our geraniums. We're gonna overwinter these in here. They will survive in here. We did this last year and they did great. They died down a lot. Actually, they lost pretty much all of their leaf material and they looked dead. And then they came right back in the early spring. So we're gonna repeat that this year. We've got this big pot here, this guy here, and then a whole bunch of them over here. <laughs> There's so many. And like Sean said, a lot of these are, we already, um, these were cuttings last year that are still baby plants kind of you know, growing still mm -hmm. maturing yeah. so okay. so for right now these are the plants we're going to place in the greenhouse to overwinter there might be more uh throughout the rest of the fall that we'll bring in maybe and we'll see and if we do we'll let you know so you might be wondering how do you set up a heating mat a propagation mat it's really simple and so what we've done is we've we've got it rolled out this one's six feet long and they come in different sizes and different widths this one is six feet and so we've got it all the way laid out it's all rolled out here and what we've done is we've plugged it in and uh, so it's got power coming to it and you can see right up here it's it's actually working so that's pretty cool and how this is set up is is the power comes to this um, from here from the extension cord and then another cord comes out of this i'm going to make sure that's nice and tight in there so because you can see this is actually this is for the mat it actually has its own power coming in to this and so the power comes in from the power cord here from our extension cord powers this the heating mat gets plugged into this and what happens is is the heating mat uh, when it's plugged into here it gets regulated by this thermometer and so uh, what happens is is it comes down and it plugs in to and starts heating this mat and again this mat is nice and warm wow really warm so 
the, the way it regulates it is, is it does this readout. It gets the readout of the temperature from this cord that we've got kind of stationed here. And it's just a little probe. It's got a metal end to it and it actually reads the soil temperature in whatever container you place it in. It reads that soil temperature and then it brings it back and it shows you the readout right here. Now this is, okay, there we go. Now we're on Fahrenheit. So right now we're at about 59 degrees uh, Fahrenheit for the average soil temperature in here. We wanna set this at about 70 would be good, 65, 70 right now. So the way we're gonna do that with this model is right here, we're gonna press and hold down set. It's on the blink. So let's, was set at 68, let's go 65. And then we just leave it alone and wait for it to stop blinking. And then it'll be set. It's really simple. And we'll have a link for uh, this actual heating mat down below if you wanna check it out and see if it's something you wanna set up in your greenhouse. They make them in all different kinds of configurations where they'll have multiple pluggings into these, uh, these thermostats right here, uh, these regulators. And so you can have multiple mats uh, running off of one of these, but this one only has the one. Okay, you guys, so that is a wrap for today's video, and we hope uh, that was helpful, and maybe if, you need, if you're kind of trying to figure out if you need to move your pots indoors, or um, you know, just knowing what to look for, know the hardiness of your plants, um, make sure and check them for bugs or anything before you move them in. Yep. And if you don't have a greenhouse, right, um, move them into your garage or inside somewhere in your house. Yep, and, and know how frost and cold temperatures impacts your plants. Understand that and how much it impacts them. And that'll help you determine if you need to move them inside or just uh, heal them in or put them up against your house or your building. So if you have any comments or questions, leave them down below for us. We love hearing from you. And make sure to subscribe if you haven't already so you don't miss our future garden care videos. And thank you for watching and for being here. And we'll see you in the next video. Yep. See you later. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye.